Hey everyone, it's Rai bringing you a ramble video for the first time in a while. Uh, on this video, I'm going to be discussing Ottomans. Highly requested video, as the Civ itself is not very intuitive at, on how to play, but can do some pretty crazy stuff in the right hands, and I want to kind of demonstrate exactly how we go about doing that. Um, so Ottomans is notorious for having one of the most unstoppable attacks in the entire game. They are a sieve that plays like nothing else. Um, and let's dive in. So the ability is nothing too flashy. Each city gains one local happiness for each religion present in the city. You receive faith when promoting units equal to the required experience not including insta heals. Okay, so what does that mean? That means very, very basically, we get one happiness per city once we spread our rel, at least. If we're in the middle of the map and there are other people near us, we get probably at least two happy per city, which is very good. Now, obviously that two happy comes later on and you could theoretically lose it, but it's still important to keep in mind. And, and that's generally um, a pretty good, okay passive you don't really think about it too much but it's nice when it comes now the interesting thing about ottomans is the second one receive faith when promoting units equal to the required xp okay what does that mean let's say you have a scout and you attack an archer with it twice and you kill the archer each attack from the scout gave you 5 xp so now we're at 10 and now we can select a promotion if we don't select insta heal, we get, and let's say we take site, site one or something like that, we'll generate 10 faith. Now, the same could be said with the warrior that you have, or you start with, or a different scout, or if you're playing honor with catapults, or with, um, you know, archers, or after you build a barrack, Selecting the promo that is given to you by the barrack, right? So this can get pretty out of hand if you think about it. Effectively, any time that we build a unit that has a barrack in it or an armory, the barrack would give 10 faith with an armory that's 20 more. With autocracy and military academies, that's 30 more. We can get up to 60 faith for buying, for building a unit. Okay, now how do, how do, like, what's so significant about that? That can also be combined with holy warriors. So if we get holy warriors and we're generating all this faith for every unit we build, and then we buy a unit with holy warriors, and then we generate more faith for buying that unit. Effectively, we're buying everything on a discount, a 30 faith discount if we have armories. Now, what makes this sieve so potent with this kind of strategy, other than the obvious efficiency, is the units themselves are very cheap. Okay, so Ottomans has two units, the Janissary and the Sapahi. Let's start with the Janissary. The Janissary is a musketman that gains 25% attack bonus and heals 50 50 hp on kill so what does that mean typically musket men are not something you attack with with the exception of a um, musketeer or uh, a minute man or something like that musket men are just usually the units you put in defend in forts well the janissary is not like a normal musket man the janissary heals and it gets an attack bonus musket men are pretty high strength in general so this attack bonus is actually quite meaningful combined with the fact that you're going to have units with promotions this unit can get out of hand pretty quickly it's going to be hard to remove and one thing that's often the problem with attacking with muskets is when you finish something and you take the tile you probably took a lot of damage this janissary is likely to full heal from that kill the kicker to the Janissary is it costs 80 to produce from 100. So 
So a normal musket man costs 100 to produce. This will only cost 80, um, which, which is crazy. Um, having a 20% discount on a unit like that is just unreal. It, it's so strong. And what also what that also means is because long swords cost eighty, when we upgrade the upgrade to long sword from musket mint costs thirty gold, pretty much nothing. So it's extremely cheap to upgrade a ton of these janissaries if you pre-built long swords, and not to mention they're just really cheap overall. So they're incredibly effective at holding tiles and, um, you know, taking taking tiles. Now. What's the other unit? The other unit is the Sapahi or a Lancer. Typically, Lancers are not very useful and they're kind of meh. They're not very strong. But this unit is so demon. So, the first thing is that it's not at the normal tech. Um, the Sapahi actually, I th it's so funny because. Um, this says uh, it comes at um, gunpowder, but oh wait, yeah, they both come at gunpowder. So it comes earlier instead of metallurgy, it comes at gunpowder, which is just awesome. It's also cheaper, so down twenty three percent from one twenty three to ninety nine. So down cheap, it's down cheaper, and. It has one extra move. It receives one additional sight and doesn't take movement penalty when pillaging. Okay, this unit is so fucking annoying to deal with on defense. It runs past you with its extra move, pillages, runs again, pillages, runs again, pillages. That means you can pillage a tile and the road underneath it without consuming any move. And you can do that over and over and over again. It is the best unit in the game for removing people's abilities to um, reinforce their cities that are currently dying. It's so annoying because even if you track it down, it can often run away and then full heal with a bunch of pillages. And it just runs amok as you're – and it's super, super annoying. Not to mention, because it has so much extra move, you can oftentimes run around the behind – run behind units to get – additional flanking bonuses which allows your janissaries to hit even harder now the true kicker is when you play this sieve is the units come super super early so they come at gunpowder you can go my favorite tech path for them is to go steel because i'm honor build my armories then go to printing then to gunpowder so I'm kind of disguising my tech path, and that way my scientist usually lines up with right when I get gunpowder, I can bulb and I'll be in cannons. The best way to use this sieve is by doing a um, Janissary Sapahi plus cannon attack, and then go kill another person with Arties. The Sapahis themselves are not incredibly strong. They're really annoying. But because you can acquire so much unit mass while playing this sieve, everything's cheap. All the, all the stuff is cheap, and they combine perfectly with Holy Warriors. So if you get Holy Warriors, everything even becomes more efficient. You can just uh, in, like build up the largest unit mass that no one can deal with, no matter what Civ it is. Now, they do struggle with taking units in forts. So if they have – if your opponent, let's say, has a double rough promoted musket man in a fort on a hill – this will not be a good sieve to deal with that. It just won't. You probably need to wait until Arties to deal with that or something like that. Or you just got to slam relentlessly into them and hope they, you know, miss a swap or something like that. But barring that, you can always walk around that tile. You could just, you know, you're going to have so many units. You could just kind of flood them and they, nothing can really properly deal with this if you attack properly. So there's two main ways to play this sieve. Um, the first is City of God Piety with an Honor Secondary. Now, this is the most intuitive way, and this is the um, most popular way to play the Civ. Um, you appear as less threatening. It's easier to play 
It's a more relaxed game. Typically, you're just kind of peacefully simming. You scale very well because City of God is just a very strong scaling bonus. Um, City of God typically wants to take Holy Warriors anyway, so this is always a great way to, one, secure the religion, but two, it's very complementary regardless, and especially so on Ottomans. The problem with it is, you know, you have low tempo and you're pretty vulnerable early. Um, oftentimes people say, what's the best way to beat Ottomans to crossbow them? Uh, because they don't have their units yet and they're not fully scaled up. This is a very good way to die to crossbows. Um, obviously it's going to be really annoying because you took City of God, so you're going to still have that Holy Warriors uh, engine going, but it won't be built up that much. Um, your hammers aren't going to be as high as potentially other variants, so your base amount of units you can create is just going to be less, but you'll be able to supplement that with the additional faith. It doesn't fully make up for the fact, but it is something. So the second way is honor into piety. Um, you're going to have a str much stronger early game. Honor is a very strong early game sieve um, by taking city-states and whatnot. You can generate a religion with faith from promotions. You can see in this picture here, um, you know, the archer uh, got 30 XP, so either probably from an armory or something. So you can see the plus 10 on the top and then the plus 20 faith on the bottom. That signifies the 30 faith you got. You only need about 200 to get a religion. It's very easy to secure a pantheon with this sieve, um, but you only need 200 faith to get a religion. So let's say you build, um, you know, um, let's say you build like four archers or something or five archers and you're archering CS. Those five archers are likely to hit all double promotions themselves. So that's 150 faith just from those five archers, not to mention the warriors that are taking the city or the scouts that are taking the city are also generating experience. So lots of ways to generate quick religion. In fact, I actually just uploaded a video and I'll probably put this in the description of this one um, where I played Ottomans and I archered CS and I got like turn 43 religion or something like that. It was pretty insane, pretty ridiculously fast religion um, that I got on this sieve. Um, not a super common thing to do as the sieve. Oftentimes you're going to be opting for catapults or something like that where you can really abuse the barracks. Um, because you're playing a vanilla sieve, you don't want to take anything too high risk. You want to play something a little bit more safe, so catapults is usually the option there. Um, but, you know, this does have the same problems as normal, um, except kind of exasperated a little more. You're going to be wanting to take Holy Warriors, which means you're missing a belief. So that piety secondary that you're taking isn't really that helpful. Um, you're always happy starved on honor because of the food modifiers you're getting. Because honor just often spreads out a lot, you're very easily teamed. This is obviously less of a problem. You're going to have less overall faith generation. Uh, even though you're on more cities, you're not planting profits. You know, you're not taking unity. You're just going to have less faith, and that's fine. And oftentimes you can't secure a religion. One of the other most common ways to beat the Ottomans player is to take their holy warriors from them. Obviously, that makes a big target on yourself, but in general, um, you know, it's a really good way to slow them down. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's switch to the gameplay. All right. So here is the video I was actually referring to. Um, I am teching gunpowder right now. And actually, I was wrong. You get Sapahis at printing. So I go printing first, upgrade to Sapahis, then go gunpowder, and then you upgrade to the Janissaries. So I just upgraded a bunch of Sapahis. I have a bunch of units coming. I have Terracotta coming. This is turn 85. So this is this is a good bit before anyone would be expecting like a Cav already attack to come or something like that, which is why this is so potent. My opponent in this case is not very prepared, so he's probably just going to roll over. So we're going to skip ahead a bit here. And you'll see, as soon as I declare war, I get my stuff in. I want to get enough units in so I can take the city as quickly as possible. Um, you'll see, as I'm taking that, I gain some faith there. And this Sapahi is just going to run in and pi start pillaging roads, start pillaging tiles. Um... And this, at this point, it's a little bit of a mixed attack. But you can, 
combine this however you want. Like I obviously made a bunch of crossbows, but you can do all sorts of different types, all sorts of different stuff. Um, like look how far that's able to run without even having any roads. It's, it's kind of unreal. Um, So we're just going to be pushing in here. And these Sapahis with their five move are able to take tiles like nothing else. All right. So within one turn, we've got two cities completely surrounded. And let's check that mill score. What was that? 100k. We're at 100k mil on turn 86. That's crazy. And remember, every time I'm only generating, uh, I did commerce this game because I wanted to mess around. But, you know, every time we're generating a unit, we're buying more and more um, units with, with the promotions and with Holy Warriors. So I'm just going to be trapping these units in that city, going to shoot it down. Trebs are not particularly strong. I just spawned a scientist, so I will have, um, I'll have enough. I'll, I'll be able to upgrade to cannons shortly. So this apology is just gonna run in. I should be pillaging these tiles, but I'm just not. And we are just steamrolling through here. Um, I'm going to fast forward a bit so I can just kind of demonstrate what I'm doing on the other side. My other neighbor is very well prepared, but that's fine. I don't have, he's not going to attack me because I have too much military. So what's going to happen instead is I'm going to wait until I kill this guy. I'm going to go straight to Artie's. It looks like I'll be getting Artie's on turn 98 this turn, which is obviously very strong. I don't think you guys can see the top of the screen. Oh, whoops. Um, it looks like we'll be getting them on turn 98. And even these even these um rifles on forts, you know. If they are getting surrounded so much, it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to shoot him with a cannon. 57 damage with a cannon is obviously really strong. I've already stopped reinforcing that top part. I'm now bringing all these units down to the bottom um, so I can help with that war effort. I'm going to be building some zoos and whatnot in my expands just so I can stay happy as I flip these cities. And we're just going to keep going. You know, we're going to completely surround this. And we're going to wait until Artie. There's no rush for me or in the middle of taking another city right now. We're still taking cities. And we just have so much unit mass because, you know, we were able to buy so many units with Holy Warriors and build so many units and whatnot. There's just so much potential just to, um, I mean, you can just see the faith increasing as I'm, you know, Buying more cannons, 214 faith, effectively with a 30 discount. That's 180 faith. So 180 faith to buy a, um, a unit means every every six units I produce is effectively a free cannon. Not to mention the faith I'm gener generating naturally. Just absurd. Such high potential for like to you know for it to get out of control um now you could do something very similar by being city of god and except you know instead of having faith return of 41 your faith return might be 120 or something like that and with um and with the uh, faith per turn at that high, every two turns of faith, you're getting a free cavalry. Um, actually, a little, a little less than that.
And I'm just going to slam the city down with Sapahis because I've just got so many. And then we're going to bring them down here. And now we're about to start attacking Kel. Um, four turns until our Arties come. So it's going to be turn 97 Arties. Justice for Chili Monkey. Thanks for the follow. I do appreciate it. And we can just take these tiles. Pillage the roads. Didn't lose any movement there. And now it's really annoying for him to kind of come in. I'm going to have so many units to just slam these these fucking units down that um you know there's not there's really not much that he can do about this and i'm just effectively just gonna start this war a little early right i have so much unit mass may as well but in four turns i'm gonna upgrade all of these cannons and i'm gonna be making a bunch of cannons and i'm gonna be upgrading them all into arty with the huge amount of unit mass i already have i'm nearing 200,000 in unit mass already which is just bizarre um so it just you know things can get really out of line really crazy um and then we catch the cc here and turn 93 um i pull forward and i just wanted to see how how quickly like we'd be able to kill him anyway um he wasn't going to be able to hold all these tiles once you start taking tiles like that and you start holding them you know if the only thing the opponent makes are you know melee frontline units he doesn't have any, you know, kill power to take back any tiles. So effectively, I, I'm kind of just sitting, sitting easy, just waiting for him to um, lose, eventually lose a tile, and I'll slowly work my way up, and then you know we'll go from there. Uh, but that's really all I wanted to showcase in this video. Ottomans is an incredibly fun sieve. It is definitely a bit degenerate. Um, and it's not very easy to play. So I make this video as a warning to people who aren't maybe too comfortable with, you know, honor or piety. Like you will probably have a very rough time playing. Um, I said, what, what was that mill square? 192 on turn 95. That is so insanely high. Like I can't, I cannot stress how high, just how high that is. That is so crazy. Um, but anyway. Uh, that's all I really wanted to cover. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, and yeah, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you want to see another one of these. And if you do, what sieve do you want to see it for? Um, great. That's all I got. Thanks, guys.